Here we are for another F1 My Team episode. Today we're here for Baku, a track that should be quite a big challenge and hopefully an opportunity to try and turn things around for us as we've had a bit of a rough run as of late. Now if you're going to enjoy today's episode, leave a like and subscribe as we get into the Pirelli hot lap. So for this one, we're going for the average speed challenge. So you go through a zone and you have to try and cross the gate above in this case 128.75 kilometers an hour on my first attempt i didn't fully grasp how it worked so we only got 124,000. but once i did it i knew what i had to do so second time around we're going to try again and this time we don't hit the wall however i didn't quite get the apex getting a decent run though it's going to be close across the gate i think we just Got it? No, we didn't. 127.99. So less than a kilometer off. And unfortunately, that was my best attempt. I tried one more time after that. I did 127.4. So, yeah, we just missed out on the gold, unfortunately, which is a real shame. And actually, this was a genuinely tough challenge. Now, before we jump into the next part of the video, if you haven't seen the previous episode, guys, the Monaco Grand Prix, go check it out. Link in the top right. Before we jump into major spoilers, now this weekend we have a power unit supplier upgrade on the reliability side of things from Mercedes for the general maintenance. To go with that we have an ICE and turbo upgrade, however front nose cone and also energy store cells on the chassis have failed. So a bit annoying that the actual performance upgrades have failed, so we've gone ahead and repurchased both of those and they should arrive soon. Hopefully we've you know, still got 1100 points left over so we can still buy some more upgrades, but this is a big moment. For the first time this season, we are the slowest team on the grid. And that is depressing. I mean, I've been, you know, flat out trying to get all the upgrades possible on the car at every possible opportunity. And we're just getting out developed by everyone. So we're definitely going through a bit of a phase and some pain. I'm still on 110 AI for this race and for qualifying as well. Uh, we'll see how it goes and we'll judge it again for the next episode. But we're jumping to practice. And we got a purple score on the track acclimatization to start things off on the right foot. We then went for the race strategy program. And before we talk about that, I want to talk about a bit of an issue this race and this weekend. So, you just saw Esteban Ocon retire. Then after that, Yuki Sonoda retired from practice. And we're not done. There was plenty more. You can see we're down to 18 runners. Turpul Chair also put it in the wall. And finally... The seven-time champion, Sir Lewis Hamilton, put it in the wall as well. So we finished with about 16 runners in practice. And it was really odd how this kept happening. And dare I say, could be a, you know, obviously it's clearly a bug. It's an issue with the game. Um, but that could be something that we have to keep in mind for the race. Because if this keeps happening in the race, then I'm expecting a lot of safety cars, you know, VSCs, just general stoppages and interruptions to the race. So... Eventually, we got our race strategy program done and we managed to get a purple score. I then tried to do the tire management. As you can see, I haven't actually done it yet. And uh, the reason why is because when I did try to do it, I clicked the flying lap option and it kept on hitting us in the wall before I even got a chance to take control of the car for some reason. So another little bug there on that program. So yeah, basically, I was losing up a set of tires before I had a chance getting damaged. You know, it costs money. So... I just didn't bother basically. So uh, yeah, after practice, we got our desk out and supply to our upgrades. And hopefully after this race, we should start to see some big upgrades take place. We now have chassis facility level two, and we've got some big drag reduction and weight reduction upgrades planned. Those are the big ones. You know, if you, if you on, on this My Team car to improve the performance, you have to cut the drag, you have to cut the weight. And we've got two major upgrades ready, uh, which we'll look at at the end of the episode. With that said, we jump into qualifying. Soft tires on, we're going to see what kind of pace we have. Now, I will admit we was a bit off the pace in practice, and that's usually a bad sign because the AI are super strong in qualifying this year's game. However, we'll keep trying and, you know, seeing... If we can try and find some pace and improve a little bit. End of our first time lap here in qualifying and it's a 140.9. However, look at the top left. It's a full second off terrible chair. I was gobsmacked. My jaw hit the floor. I could not believe I was a full second off. There was time to find that lap. 
but a full second is ridiculous. Anyway, this was my best lap in qualifying, so let's get into it and let's see just how much time we find. Turn one, brake at the curb on the right, down to fourth gear, try to not get too much inside curb, short shift to get a nice clean run out of the exit of one, brake at the 50 for turn two, short shift to fourth, use the exit and I get a nice clean run off and traction out of the corner. Turn three, spot the 100 on the right, that's your braking reference as Kevin Magnussen crashes right in front of us in qualifying. And I believe there have been other crashes as well, but other cars have already set laps before they crashed. So, um, yeah, that's why we're still P21. Making our way into sector two now, though, two and a half tenths up through the right or the left right chicane. We hit the inside wall and just lose a bit of time through there, about a tenth of a second as I had a bit of a scruffy sequence. Now, though, into the castle section. We just about get away with the corner cut there. That was right on the limit. Now though into the castle, carrying the speed through here. Four and a half tenths up at one point as we try to maximize the lap time. On the exit though, we light up the rears. Well, what happened? Let me know you're okay. And you can see by my reaction, I was very annoyed with that. Good old fashioned Toto Wolf smash of doom. And qualifying over. A shame. I do think that, you know, that was a really good lap. I don't think we would have improved by a full second, make no mistake about it. But still, I would have been satisfied with that lap. Um, we lost a tenth, of course, in that left right chicane. So you could say we would have been about nearly six tenths up had I got that exit down nice and cleanly. So it would have been a better lap. Having said that, I think at best I could have broken the 39s or, you know, the, the, the 140s, uh, probably like a 139, 999 or something. That would have been the absolute best I could have done. Um, but the AI went on to improve even more. So poor Che out qualified us by a second and a half. Painful, man. It's um, it's tough, but it is what it is. Zhou Guan Yu, DNF, he crashed in qualifying, as we saw so Magnuson as well. So uh, a few cars picking up some, you know, some damage. And uh, yeah, we'll see how that affects the race. Either way, we're starting on the last row once again. Of course, worth noting that, you know, we had all these crashes, so I'm expecting safety cars and a bit of chaos in the race. Good afternoon and welcome from Baku. This was the arena, if you think back to 2017, of one of the most eventful races of modern history, with controversy behind the safety car, last second overtakes, and a historic podium for Williams and for Lance Stroll. Let's find out what lies in store for us this year. It's time for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. With 20 turns and a length of 3.7 miles, Baku City Circuit in the heart of the Azerbaijan capital is a real test of a driver's endurance, patience, and precision. 90 degree corners through sector one lead into a tightening uphill sprint as we start to circle around the old city. Then a 1.4 mile chase flat out through sector three towards the finish line. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday, and it's put him on pole. And a very happy Carlos Sainz will start second. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Verstappen, George Russell, and Perez, Norris, Bottas, Mick Schumacher, and Daniel Ricciardo, Gasly, Fernando Alonso, Esteban Ocon, and Vettel, Albon, Magnussen, Lance Stroll, and Theo Porcher, Latifi, Martinez, Joe and Yuki Tsunoda. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. Now then, let's get into it. It's time for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. P20, we have been promoted an extra place on the grid due to penalties, but let's talk about the elephant in the room. So, it does seem like we're off the pace again. I'm expecting a race that's going to follow the trend of the last few the reality is we do have the slowest car on the grid. That's, you know, how things are. The performance chart doesn't lie. So we're going to be up against it. Not just this race, I think, for the next few. So it's going to be a battle. So hopefully you guys stick by me and keep supporting. And hopefully things turn around. Either way, leave a like if you're going to enjoy the race. For this one, though, I'm not going to do what we did at Monaco. I felt like the hard tie didn't really work. So we're going to start in the medium. Um... Reverse one stop, medium hard. Last year it was medium uh, soft, but you can't really do that this year anymore, so uh, tire wear's a bit higher. 
Fuel wise, I'm going to go 0.8 because I had fuel saving issues in Monaco and I want to be safe. Other than that, no more big surprises really. Let's give it everything we've got. Hopefully some safety cars, a bit of chaos. The reality is you've seen how many crashes and DNFs we've had over practice and qualifying. I'm expecting at least a couple in the race. So there's definitely going to be safety cars, virtual safety cars and opportunities to make things happen this race. So dare I say I'm aiming for points. So let's get into it and let's make this a good race. Let's see how the race goes then. I'm looking forward to this. I think there is potential. The more I think about it, there's been a lot of crashes. So if the trend continues, keyword being if, then we could see some chaos here today. Let's try and get a decent start. If one car stacks it in the barrier, it's going to cause a massive pile up and a massive collision. So we're going to be very aware of that and keep our eyes open. Let's get the car lined up in the grid spot though nicely if we can. There we go. We'll take that. Purple score. And let's get into it. Hopefully a nice clean start. Here we go. Five lights are on. Not a bad start. A little bit of wall spin in the second phase. We're going to try and go up the inside of Latifi here into turn one. There we go. Nicely done. Into turn two now. It's all getting a bit hectic already. Going to go nice and wide. Get a nice wide line with a nice exit on to the back straight. Sonoda... Looking for a move here. We're going to send them to the outside. Uh oh. Let's be careful here. Bit of debris off the track on the right there. Someone's lost a bit of front wing. Ay ay ay. Please be careful. Please be careful. Fine back here. Not going to let this one go easily. P19 for now want to focus here front wing is very much at risk Paul chair getting a great start up into p16 by the way great to see through the castle for the first time car doesn't really bounce over those curbs that well and i've you know i've increased the rod height a bit but doesn't seem to be making much of a difference i've got a gap to the tv so that's good let's see how this first lap ends as we approach this very tricky left hander full tank of fuel so not sure what to expect all I want is to try and stay within the RS range, man. That would be perfect. ERS management will be important again this race, just like in Monaco. Well, lap one draws to a close, and we're up a place, which I'll take. And we've got Sebastian Vettel in the pits, Latifi as well. So Noda draining his entire battery to have a look at us into turn one. Then the AI are going to use pretty much most of their recharge in the first two laps like they usually do so if I can hold on to some that would be great having said that we're already dropping off 1.8 seconds off Magnuson that's quite a lot I don't know how I'm going to keep Sonoda and Joe behind us but I'll do the best I can well I think I'm going to get eaten up here by Sonoda if he has like 50% charge just going to have a look I don't really have an answer I think we're down on straight lines if you look at the speed difference without even having DRS to know that's absolutely flying. So we're not going to fight it. I'd rather try and get DRS. Let's see if I can hang with Yuki Sonoda here and just hang DRS. Okay, we've held on to DRS. Yellow flag ahead. Someone's broken down. We're not going to use battery in case Safety car gets the pole. Look at Zhou and you with the straight line speed. Yellow flag zone coming up though. Okay, some information on Ricardo. They're retiring from the race. I don't understand why the AI do that. I mean, they shouldn't be allowed to do that because it's a yellow flag, but they do it and they don't get penalised for it. Because of that, we've dropped out of the RS range and there's no even a safety car. Great, great logic. That's me out of battery now because of that. So, Zhou and you will happily pass me now. So go ahead mate, get the job done. I can't do anything anymore. We're really slow on the straight and I'm running like 13, 19 or 14, 20 wings. I mean, it's pretty low, but clearly not low enough. So there we go, down to last place now pretty much. Let's keep chipping away. Hopefully we can get back into the RS range, courtesy of Zoe, seeing as he took me out of it. 
I'm completely out of battery. I'm going to lose the RS, even though I'm going to have it now. I'm going to lose it on the next straight. The AI have infinite amounts of battery by the looks of it. Or the ERS just super well upgraded. Either way, I've got nothing to respond with right now. So we are, we are going to drop out of range. And with that, drop away from the pack. I don't have an answer. Again, another race where we're just not fast enough. The car is truly the worst car on the grid now. That's it. We're done. And so far, no crash. Starting to struggle now for pace. Rear tire wear is taking effect. Only seven laps. Literally, as I was saying, th only you know, 35% after just seven laps. It's pretty damn high. So definitely a medium to hard tire strategy this race. No battery whatsoever, so I'm literally bleeding a full second between the third and first sectors. Maybe even more than that. I'm actually slightly quicker in the second sector, but I'm losing too much. I need a miracle yet again. Managing to just close the gap a little bit on this lap as the cars ahead are battling a bit, so we're not fully dropping away. Vettel and Latifi did pit on that last lap, so I think they're kind of out of the picture really in terms of strategy. So I think we can stay ahead, but my pace is my pace. I am relying on more battles ahead for me to get back into this, and that is what's happening right now. So let's see if we can try and make up some ground. Okay, let's pit and get the hell off this tire and get a fresh. Hard tire one, not that that's going to help us really, I mean, you know, same thing really in terms of pace, nothing's going to change, but it just means I can be a bit more comfortable on track, right really on 60%, here we go, let's try another split entry if we can, decent aggression, we'll take that, that was pretty solid, it's about as good as it gets, now we need a perfect stop, hopefully, let's do our bit and get the purple timing, Lovely. Straight through the mechanic. 2.5, we'll take that. Now let's try and warm these tires up. I pressed the limited button, didn't go off, and we've been pushed off the track as well by the automated driving. I need to fix this last my team pit box, man. There's too many circuits. Spain was the same issue as well. It's annoying. All that hard work with the pit entry and timing the turn in. For nothing, absolutely nothing. So, full chair in the pit lane. I've lost a second and a half to Lance Stroll this lap. The AI are absolutely untouchable, even at the pits on cold tyres. They're so much quicker. I'm definitely going to reconsider my options moving forward after this race because I want to have fun. Anyway, let's see where we are. Looks like everyone has done their stops and has comfortably rejoined ahead of us. So, we're back to being on our own again. I launched Stroll pits again. Bottas in the pit lane as well, so possible damage for both who are having to do an extra stop. Bottas onto a soft tire, that's a long way to go. There I say you'll have to stop again, surely. He'll be getting past though this lap, uh, so he'll be much quicker than me on that tire. But yeah, we'll keep chipping away. Feels like the career mode is really boring all of a sudden, there's no um, unpredictability like we went from having VSCs and safety cars in the first few races to having absolutely nothing for the last four races, I think. It needs something, man. Bottas already all over the back of us, though. Great. Cheers, Valtteri. Smashing the rear. Appreciate it, mate. Let's go. What a waste of time. The AI are so stupid sometimes. Oh. <sighs> Sebastian Vettel is going to actually probably get past us to be fair, on pace. Latifi's catching up as well, so this isn't over yet. Anyway, we'll just sit behind Bottas for now, and hopefully the next DRS zone, or maybe not, he's going to pit again, as uh, he went into the back of us, of course. So there you go. I'm actually slower in this stint compared to the first one. I'm bleeding way more time. Nothing in the second sector, it's all in the third and first sector. It's crazy. Just pure braking, performance, acceleration, traction, top speed, all of it. I can't match the AI in terms of, you know, if I, if I run low drag, then I'm so slow in the corners. If I want to match them up in the corners, I'm so slow in the straights. Literally impossible to find the balance. Sebastian Vettel now is next, and I'm not even going to use one bit of battery, so if he gets by, he gets by. It's just not my battle right now. You know, I'm trying to stay competitive on the pace. Poor chairs destroying me, you know, simply put. Look at the speed difference. 
I've got absolutely nothing. We'll just keep doing our thing. But there's not much we can do with race. Trying to hang on to Sebastian Vettel's DRS, but we've lost it. It's funny how even when I had DRS, I was actually still losing on the straight. Admittedly, I've got no battery, but my DRS is open, and that's really powerful in this year's game. And Seb was still pulling away. So, um, yeah, we've got no chance. The car, I'm just, I'm just bleeding half a second on the straight. Personal best in that lap. Still means absolutely nothing, as we're still just bleeding time everywhere. I just want this race to end. There's no way we're getting a safety car. It doesn't seem to be happening anymore. For some reason, they've just disappeared all of a sudden in this crew mode. So, let's just get to the end. Not sure what that's for. Something's happened on track somewhere. To be fair, Paul Chair and Guan Yu Zhou have been battling quite heavily for the last half lap or so. But then Stroll has just pit, so maybe Stroll had contact or something. Bottas in the pits again as well. I don't know, something's happened somewhere. I think it's Paul Chair. I think he's dropping off the pace here. Here we go, last lap of the race. Final sector now, trying to make sure we stay ahead of Latifi, ideally. But yeah, P16 for Paul Chair, P18 for us. And in the end, I finished 15 seconds off him. Not too bad, but just no pace, man. Frustrating. Got to try and get to the bottom of this. Reduce drag, reduce weight. And the one thing that I'm sometimes now is the ERS needs improvement as well. But there we go. Across the line, job done in Baku. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. another Azerbaijan Grand Prix. A fascinating race and a well-deserved victory. What do you think it was today, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition? Well, I honestly feel it was down to the driver and car today. I mean, we can talk driver skill all day, but if you don't have a solid team to back that, you're never going to get anywhere. When you hit that sweet spot of having both an excellent driver and an incredible car, that's when you see results like those we witnessed today. Looking at the podium, you can see that red suit familiar to fans across the globe. A world-class win for a world-class team. Ferrari, do it again. Race done in Baku, and I think there was a late second stop for Carlos Sainz because he was second place behind Leclerc, so something happened right at the end. So that's big for the championship. Leclerc's going to pick up some big points. Sainz did salvage a fastest lap, but Leclerc, Hamilton, of Verstappen, your podium ahead of Russell and P4, Perez, Sainz, Norris, Schumacher, Alonso, Gasly, your top 10. Missing out on the points, Arcon, Magnussen, Sonoda, Joe. Albon, Paul Chair, Vettel, myself, Latifi, Stroll, lap down, Bottas, lap down, Ricardo out of the race. Standings with P13, Lando overtakes us easily and is now six points clear. The gap at the top, 22 points difference as Hamilton overtakes Verstappen for P3. In the constructors, we're still P8, but McLaren now have a 14 point lead. Alpha Tari gain a point, courtesy of Pierre, so there are two points off now, so they're getting closer and we need to respond but it seems like we can't develop fast enough at the minute so uh we'll see what we can do either way it feels like progress is going to be slow at the moment so uh, let's do some more of it and let's see what we can do heading into canada worth noting ricardo has officially won the rivalry not that i ever stood a chance and that's going to affect my acclaim but luckily poor chair doing a good job and it's going to rack up the acclaim for the team as we got to level eight getting closer now to level 10 which i believe is when we unlock our next sponsor and then hopefully once we get that third sponsor 
that's when the cash should hopefully start to really flow in the team. At the moment though, a lot of damages. It's not helping, man. We're not making enough progress. Now only three days until the next race in Canada. Luckily the front nose upgrade which failed for this race is going to arrive. So we will have a small improvement on the car. We don't really have time for much really before the next race. So we'll just go for some weight training to keep Paul Chair sharp because he's driving pretty well. So even though I'm not performing, you know, Paul Chair is doing a good job. 1,800 R&D points and we're going to go ahead and spend those. Now the one thing that really bugged me that race was ERS. So we're going to get the status on straight away and hopefully that will help us out and that will make us the third best engine on the grid pretty much i felt like we needed that because we're running out of vr straight away you know after a lap elsewhere we've got the engine cover for weight redistribution and we've got the monocoque structure which would reduce weight that is a good option what about on the drag reduction streamlined suspension arms I know drag is the biggest issue with this car, so we're going to go for this first. Or never mind, we can't do that because we've got the front nose. So what we'll do is we'll go for the engine cover first, and then we'll get the suspension arms after the next race. Hopefully, if we can bag over a thousand points, that would be perfect. Hopefully, we'll get a couple of discounts as well. But we can't waste time. If we can't get one upgrade, we'll get another one. Either way, upgrades on the way. If they do arrive, it should push us above Alpha Tari and maybe even Aston Martin. So let's see, we're back ahead of Williams with our upgrade, but let's move into the next race. And there we go, confirmation of the front nose upgrade. So now next race, we'll get the streamlined suspension arms. And hopefully if this upgrade along with the engine cover, if they both arrive and hopefully don't fail, that would be a very good step forward for us in about a monthly period. So fingers crossed that goes okay. Other than that, that is pretty much it guys for the episode. We'll do the pretty hot lap in the next episode for Canada. We need the points, so we're going to keep chipping away and get that money, get that acclaim in because we need to get to level 10 to unlock that extra slot. Um, where is that? Let me try and find that. Yeah, this one here. We, we need that level 10. Once we get that, we can start to really bring some money in and make a big difference. But until that arrives, we're still kind of going sideways. But yeah, guys, that is going to be it from me here today. Hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe for more if you're enjoying the suffering and the pain of being the slowest team on the grid right now. As always, a massive shout out to the members. Check out the videos on screen if you haven't seen them. And yeah, guys, I'll see you all in the next one for the Canadian Grand Prix. Until then, take care. And it's goodbye from me.